So now we can consider evaporation. Evaporation is all about um, what happens to a substance if you leave it long enough. I mean, this one here, this often happens, especially liquids. So if a substance is below its boiling temperature, in other words, if it's in liquid form, so it's not boiling yet. So if it's in liquid form, it can evaporate. Now, what do we mean by to evaporate? Do we mean that the molecules have enough EK? What I mean by that, that's kinetic energy to escape. So maybe I should draw this. So I have some sort of container here. There's my container. Uh, actually, maybe I'll draw it even wider. So let's just say I have my nice container here. And it's got some sort of liquid in it. Now that liquid contains these little particles. Little particles, maybe this one going that way, maybe this one going that way. So what happens is, remember temperature is all about average kinetic energy. Average just means that, right? It's what it is on average. That means some can be higher, some can be lower. So if you imagine if you're just sitting there and some of them have lots of energy, which means they can actually go faster. Because remember kinetic energy contains, remember kinetic energy is half, mv squared. So that means then that the more kinetic energy they have, the more speed they have. And remember, temperature is all about kinetic energy, the average kinetic energy. So because of this, because it's just an average, that means that some of these particles actually have enough speed, in other words, have enough energy to actually escape. So maybe this one here goes flying out. See, it actually escapes. That's the key thing here. So some of them actually escape. So what really happens with any evaporation then is that um, I mean the liquid actually loses molecules. That's what really happens. So the liquid actually loses molecules. In other words, give it some time, there's less of it. This explains how you can you know leave a puddle of water, for example. If you leave a big giant puddle of water, uh, come back, let's say, two days later, and what do you get? Maybe you get just like almost no water left. Why is that? The water all evaporated away. Why is that? Because some of these particles actually, on average, some of them go faster than the temperature, so that means they can actually escape. They have enough energy to get out. Now, evaporation actually depends on a few factors. Uh, let's see, one of the factors it depends on is surface area. In other words, you know, how wide is that surface? So a larger surface area, what will that mean? Well, if it's larger, that means there's more place for them to escape from. So that means more evaporation. I'm going to write evap for evaporation for short. But it also depends, I mean, not, not just on surface area, but also temperature. It turns out that the larger temperature, so the hotter it is, then you also have more evaporation. Now, so it's surface area and temperature. But you also have, um, let's say, the wind or a breeze or something like that. So breeze or wind. Again, um, here we could say, for example, more wind. So the more breeze there is, the easier it is for them to leave as well. So more evaporation. And it also depends, I mean, it depends on a lot of other things, but actually another big one, it turns out, is pressure. Now, pressure is actually something that's sort of pushing all the material down. So over here, you've kind of got pressure that's sort of stomping down on all this whole thing. So it's like pressure is sort of, you know, holding it down. So what this means is that if you had less pressure, this one works a little bit backwards here, but less pressure means you're not holding the material down much. So that means you also get more evaporation. So that means if you have more pressure, then you have less evaporation. So just kind of showing how these ones, how these different factors work. And there's lots of other things, but these are the main ones. And pressure, I think, is a really interesting one.